it was beautiful up there the whole time. Yeah. Uh, well, praise the Lord, everyone. Good to be back. Well, look at that. My Bible opened to Jeremiah. Hmm. So I've been reading. You know, I got to say something. We've been gone three weeks. This country's gone insane. <laughs> In three weeks. Yeah, yeah, it did. It's demonic. But, I mean, you think about it. Disband the police departments. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. No, no more money. Yeah. Well, Northampton already did cut theirs. Yeah, yeah well, that's typical. But, yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. The same ones who wanted to span will be the first ones to call them. That's because it is demonic. It is. People have got to realize that. You know, I was just going to, guess what I was going to say. It's time for God's church to wake up and start being who God has called us to be and not being these little wimps who say, I'm a church person. I can do Stand up for who we are in Christ and say, that's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. You know, that's right. See, God's causing us. What did, remember somebody preaching one time, the time of discontentment? Divine discontentment? I think that God's got us. Because it's time for the church to arise. It really is. It's time for the church to come together as well. One man. One man. In fact, that's it. I got two more chapters left in the book. And then, huh? No. <laughs> Come on, bud. <laughs> you guys get sick of seeing my face up here. <laughs> Tabernacles, the Feast of Restoration. What's God doing now? He's restoring us. He's been restoring us the day of Martin Luther. Right? Come on. It all started then. When God caused one man to arise, look at the book and say, whoa. Opened his eyes to the truth of what? Foundational truth, right? What we're going to see today in this is from the book of Ezra, okay? The restoration of the temple. How many of you remember that when you read it? Huh? Nehemiah, Ezra. Now think of, we were talking about it, just Tim and I were talking about it. They were in Babylon for 70 years. Now think about that. Most of the people were born in Babylon. The whole generation. They never saw. All they did was hear from their parents and grandparents about how great Jerusalem was. What a great city it was on the hill. Oh, and you know... We'd love to go back there, but it's too late. Jerusalem's torn down. There's nothing left. And what happened? They became content in the land. How many people were there, you think? It doesn't really say, does it, how many people were in captivity? But there have, probably were millions, I should say. Yeah, yeah. Only 50,000 came back. And that's what? A remnant. That's a remnant in the land. Let me read a little bit here. Take the old specs out. As we consider the spiritual significance of the glory and power and wisdom of Solomon's kingdom, now let us consider the spiritual significance of the days of restoration following the captivity. Both temples and both periods of history are applicable to us today. Solomon's day speaking of the glory and power and wisdom of the church and the days of restoration showing in what manner the lost glory is going to be restored. As for the days of restoration, it will be of particular interest and profit to us if we consider carefully the books of Ezra, Nehemiah, Haggai, and Zechariah. Because these four books deal particularly with the return of the remnant to Jerusalem following the captivity 
and her attempt to restore the walls and the temple and the order of religious worship. Ezra was a priest. Nehemiah was governor of Jerusalem. Both Haggai and Zechariah were prophets of the Lord who encouraged the builders in the great task which lie before them. Now think about it. They were leaders. When they got the call to go back to Jerusalem, think about it. 50,000 went back, but what did they have? You know how long it took to build that original temple? The craftsmen, the masons, come on. The builders, the cedar, they had none of that. They went back with nothing. And they had to rebuild the temple. I mean, what a task, do you think? You know, it's like you're looking at this big pile of rubble that used to be, and you're going, what are we going to do? How are we going to start? That's why they need, builders of the church, they need encouragement. That's where I'm going. Leaders of the house of God need to be encouraged. They need to be supported. Come on. And they need to be encouraged. We're with you, and we're on the road. That's it. Yes, that's what they did, bud. You're right. And the watchmen on the walls. Need the watchmen. The remnant who had returned from Babylon to Jerusalem were determined that all things should be restored according to the original pattern. There it is. No, no. Because that original pattern's who? Jesus. Amen? He's the pattern, son. And he's building... A son. And so they kept the feast of the Lord also in their due season. We in due season? Yep. They kept also the feast of tabernacles. It is written and offered daily burnt offerings and duty of every day required. Ezra 3 4. They could not keep the feast in its fullness because they didn't have the temple. Come on. For the foundation of the house of the Lord was not yet laid, but they absorbed the pattern as best they could. What have we been doing? We've been observing the pattern, son, as best we can, as we know. But God's adding to it. God's adding to it. He's not subtracting. He's adding. Yeah, always adding. Because you look at the world today out there. Come on, we were just talking. You'd think we're going downhill. Well, Society is, but not the church. Come on, we're going uphill. We're going up. I don't, you know, I look, I mean, I'll be watching the news and I'll see this, I'll see this stuff and I, I just go, I just shake my head and go, thank God for the church. Dude, thank God for the church. That's, that's who we are. I'm not going to let this stuff tear my countenance down. You can't. Don't let it tear you down. Don't let it worry you. Don't let it. <laughs> and now as the first rays of this glorious feast began to appear on the eastern horizon, we have every reason to rejoice knowing that the days of restoration are here. And little by little, we can see how the pattern is being unfolded before our eyes. Can you see it? I mean, it's easy to look back and look back to Martin Luther and the pro protest, yeah. protestant, you know, protestants, yeah. protestants. Yeah. Okay, that's why they were called that. And then along came the patterns being revealed, the anti-Baptist, come on, into the holiness movement. And then came along Azusa Street. See, God's been restoring. He's restored the first two feasts. Yep, yeah, the Jesus movement, yeah. And then we had the glory of 1947, the latter rain movement, which we've heard a lot about. That's who this guy came out of, George Warnock. He came out of that, that movement. But God's, we can see how God's been restoring. But do we see it today in us? Yeah. If you have eyes to see and ears to hear, come on. We need it. We need to have our spiritual eyes open more, and our spiritual ears listening for that still, small voice. See, God doesn't yell at you unless he's mad at you. No. It's usually that still, small voice that comes in your ear. Was that you, God? Yeah. You kind of know it because usually it's correction. 
or what are you doing? What are you doing that for? That's what he speaks to me. He doesn't speak to me in all religious terms. He just, what are you doing? You know better. Yeah, you know, you could you talk to like that. It's like a father. <laughs> this part I love. The people assemble as one man. And when the seventh month was come, all in due time, amen? What month are we in now, guys? Well, if it's the last feast we're entering, right? Feast of Tabernacles, we're in the seventh month in God. We're entering into that seventh month, which is what? The fullness of tabernacles, which is the fullness of Christ in the people. Spiritual perfection. Yeah. Oh, but there's no such thing. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> I've had people tell me there's no such thing. You're not perfected till you go to heaven yeah. or you get raptured. See, as long as people keep believing falsehood, never come to the truth of the fullness of who God is in the people. Yeah, Ron. What's the word say? Yeah. Be ye perfect. After, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, instead of allowing God to usher it into a people. I'm preaching to the choir here. Seriously. <laughs> this, of course, is the foundational truth of this whole revival which God has given the church. And one of the first revelations that came forth that God would now bring his people together to form one body. At the beginning, it was hoped every Christian everywhere would catch the vision that before long, the whole body of saints would become one living, vital organism united together in the bonds of the Spirit unto one common person, per, uh, purpose. That's the goal, isn't it really, though? Isn't it really? To bring other... But it doesn't happen. It didn't happen, did it? Because you got a group over here. You got a group over here. This one doesn't believe that one. That one doesn't believe that one. This one believes this. This one believes that. Go ahead. Exactly. Self-centered. Yep. He, that's what he says right in here. We're going to read it. He says that. Yep. What's right in his own eyes. How about we do what's right in God's eyes? See? That's what this... That's it. That's what... That's, I believe, this congregation is coming to. To do what's right in God's eyes. What God wants us to do. Not our good ideas. Come on. There's some good ideas. That's okay. There's good things to do. Yeah, God ideas. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Just as a good idea doesn't make it a God idea. Yeah. And we've been taught well. Okay. Here it is here. But he came parent that only a remnant are returning to Jerusalem. God's got a remnant that he's putting together to be that perfect man, to be that man-child company of Revelation chapter 12. The vast majority are content to remain in Babylon. Are you content, church? Are you content to remain where God? Uh-uh. Uh-uh, yeah. I'm not satisfied as long as I'm breathing. I want more of him in me and in every one of you because I can't do it myself and you can't do it yourself. We have to be one in heart, mind, and purpose and it's got to be God purpose. But just like today, many are content. Come on, I'll go to church on Sunday. Because you know, I get home, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. See, where's your mind? Where's your heart? You know? Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm hungry. Huh? The vast majority are content to remain in Babylon, for they have grown up in that state and know nothing of the glory of God which once rested mightily on the temple of God. They are prosperous enough, and the venture which a few fanatical Israelites have started early and fantastic that they will have nothing to do with it. You see, like we said, most of them were born in that land. They knew nothing else but Babylon. And they grew up under the Bab Babylonian system. They were content to be in Babylon. Or with us, content to be in Egypt. 
the world. I'm not content. I can look at every one of you and tell you're not content either. Oh, got a mic. Next time, Chris, go, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Ron would. <laughs> no. That being said, so the key of one of the keys that I believe to attaining is we all we all sin and fall short. Right. We all have sin in our lives. Yep. We think we see our own sin, but I don't think we do. I know I don't. I'm not even going to say anything about all of you. I don't see my own sin. There are only times and moments where I see, and I'm not talking, um, I don't know. Uh, um, I'm talking the, the little sins that so easily beset us, okay? Right. These, and Which there's no it? little and there's no large. I'm just talking, you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? So as, you know, and, and when we see those things, what do we do about it? Do we say, oh, that's, that's not that big of a deal? Or, mm. you know, oh, Lord, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. I repent. And then <laughs> an hour later, you're saying those same words out of your mouth. And I think that that is, is just such a, a, a key to attaining. And it's something that I've had a big issue with these past few months and seeing these little pieces of dirt that are in me. That's and I don't, I don't want them there. That's good. No, and that's I repent, yeah. but it's not true repentance because then it comes up again. So. <laughs> oh, wretched man that I am. <laughs> you know, Paul, come on. What did Paul say? Thank God. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. We'll die. We'll die from heartbrokenness because we fail so much. Yes. That's it. How come it's so easy for somebody else to see my faults when I don't? I know. Come on. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. If you give him time. Yeah. See what I want to see. Right. <laughs> it's true. Wow. Think Looking about it. Looking in the wrong mirror. I mean, I see it. I see it. I know it. I repent. But then sometimes I do it again. Because God's working on me. And he's working. And he's working. And he'll keep working on that until he gets it out of you. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Overcome just doesn't go, oh, Lord, I repent. Take this from me. Boom. No, it's a process. That's right. What's that? Yeah. 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 Ding. Yeah. 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 That's it. Run around with the little magic wand. Dude, you're better. Dude, you're better. See, God doesn't work that way. And you know something? Okay, you know the word says we see darkly? Sometimes that's the way we see our sin, too. We don't see it fully like God sees it. God is, you're, we're an open book to God, let's face it. You know, he sees everything in us. Yeah, thank God for grace and mercy. Mercy triumphs, that's right. We have to believe, see, we have to believe that God's going to get all that stuff out of us. You have to. Yeah, it's faith. Right. Yes. Chris, you got it right. We gave ourselves to him. Fully. Yep. It's dead. Yeah, residue. Right, it's a thinking because that old man went down. He died. He died in the water. Okay. Death. But then the Bible says that you must reckon him now dead and the new man alive. What That's up to is, us. Yeah. This, this is really cool. Adam cannot act like Christ, but you know the new man can act like Adam if he chooses 
Right. Yeah. Right. There it is. Choice. Choice. It's not, it's not, it is not an issue of nature anymore. Now it's an issue of character. And God is working out the character of Christ in a people. This people here, we can talk well, we them to the waters, and he is dead. Now the issue is he is working out the Christ character. Nature in us. is already settled. Nature is not the issue. We have his nature. Right. And that becomes a process that God works out exactly. in us, not only individually, but more importantly, collectively. Bingo. What he's talking about here, the one man. One man. See, he's putting us together. He's putting us together. It's the puzzle so, pieces. Yeah, it Stay is. Connected. One with him, one with the Father, one with one another. Yep. Oneness. That's Oneness. what it's all about. The whole thing. See, that's what he's working. That's that, you know, that's that man. That corporate man. That one man. Because we like self-serving. Yeah, like bingo. And it's got to be in the church must be Christ-centered. There's no other way. Yeah. We want to see a quick fix. There will never be a quick no, fix. Ever. Until the church becomes one with the Father, one with the Son, and one with one another. Yep. That's I it. I and Father are one, but those that you gave me, that they would be one as we, we are, are one. one. Yeah. yeah. Not my will. That was his prayer. But your will. Yeah. That was his prayer. And you think that's going to fall to the ground? Heck no. Those one words he prayed. It will never happen. That's right. Yep. Yep. Grace will work on you. Mercy will work on you. God will work on you. But until you lay it all down and become Christ centered, Christ yeah. is not Jesus. Right. Only. Yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Together as one. That's the bottom line. Yep. You see. I heard this too. A lot of times <laughs> we commit, I'll say, necromancy. Because we go back and try to dig that thing up that's dead. And you can't do it. No. Right. And, it, and what good was it? Yeah. See, if, if, if you've been totally spiritually circumcised, come on. That old man is, he's cut off. Yeah. We just go back in our. There it is. Bingo. Oh yeah, now you're what? If any man be in He's what? Christ, new. He is a new creation. That's the way we have to see All ourselves. And one another. From God. That's what we have to see. We have to see ourselves as God sees us. A new creation. You're a new creation. You're a new creation. I'm a new creation. We all are. But we have to see one another that way too. Yeah. Not our faults, but the Christ in us. Absolutely. No. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Right. But we, that's what. <laughs> we, no, we have to work. You know something? We have to allow God to work on us, but we have to work on us too by his anointing to grow up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do not resuscitate. I like it. Go ahead, Elise. Okay. Okay. Two things. I say this to uh, my friend little Linda here all the time. The past is buried, but unless you bury the shovel with it, you're going to have the shovel keep digging it up and digging it up. So bury the shovel with it. And the other thing is like, when they crossed the Red Sea, they couldn't go back across the water. They couldn't go back -way trip. to Egypt. They couldn't go back. Even if they wanted to, they couldn't. That was gone. That was dead. That was over. But they always thought about it instead of thinking of Christ. They thought about it, thought about it, thought about it, instead of focusing on the Lord. Yeah. And that's what happened. They even said it. Oh, the leeks and the garlic we had in Egypt. Oh, the good old days. See. That's it. There's no, there's no. That's right. The good old days, that's it. They're old. They're past. Your future, your future and your today in Christ is right now. Right now. And it, it's what you choose to do with it. Go ahead. For God is certainly preparing for himself. Everybody get that? 
Yeah. Yep. For himself. Yeah. Bingo. And then, you know what, then let's all walk this process all together. Right. Yeah, not because think about it. We're all going to struggle in this. We're all going to do it. But hey, fear not. Yes. Right. He said, fear not. Fear I'll not. overcome. That's it. You know what? We keep saying, you call them a little sin. I have little sin. But really, it's not what? It's not sin. Paul deals with this. He says it's the flesh. Yeah, it's, it's flesh. It's the flesh of this thing. And he's working it out. Yep. You s- go ahead. Come on. What's it say in Revelation about the overcomers? They love not their lives. Unto what? Yeah. Come Unto on. the death. Are the How old- did they overcome? By the washing of the blood. That's it. God sees us through the blood of the That's it. And he sees us pure. He can come and say, thank you. You know what? That's it. Who cares? Come on. Yeah. Huh? You know, yeah. in that little toothpick or that square what is in your thing, you know what? It, you ever get it? You ever get something in your eye? Oh, yeah. It irritates. Yeah. It irritates until it gets fully removed. And that's what's happening with the body of Christ. Yeah. Come on. We're Go ahead. Yeah, we are. If you're not irritated, then you know what? God bless you because you don't have nothing in your eyes. <laughs> Kali, yeah. What? That was good. It is true. We got it. Yeah, we got to grow up, wake up. I probably have some obvious things to say, but just to combine what everyone is saying. God has given us new life, but if you don't feed new life, it's going to die. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, the old is buried, but if you don't do the work to build yourself up, it's going right. to die, and you're going to go back to dead things, create more dead yeah. You know what I mean? And obviously, like, whatever you feed is what's going to grow. Um, and just more of the talk of the unity, it's why it's so important to have the mind of Christ because I can try as hard as I want, but I'm never going to think the same way as him and the same way as her, and right. we're never going to think the same way in our own flesh. We have to have the mind of Christ, and then we all think like Christ. So that's why it's not in, I know that's an obvious thing to say, but it's not something we can do in our own strength. That's why we have to be convicted here in the Word, yep. because Washing we're all going to twist it our own way to our own, what we want. But if we are in the mind of Christ, then we can stand as one and walk forward in it. Yep. And what's the Bible say? It says, Paul said what? But we have the mind of Christ. He didn't say you're going to get it. He says you got it. You got to use it. Yeah, you got to develop it. I'm not a math person, okay? I got as far as algebra. I hated trig and all that stuff, all right? But you have to learn it. You have to learn it. So what is it with Christ? You have to learn to become Christ. It's a learning process. It's here together. It's the word that we get. Yeah, and it's the word that we feed each other or ourselves every day. There's, you know something? There's one thing about Jesus. He was never self-centered. There's only one time he even thought about it, and that was in the garden. He said, if this can pass for me, 
But he said, nevertheless, what? Your will, not mine. See, he got it. He knew. He, you know why? Because he knew who he was. That's it. Yeah, he saw. From before the foundation of the world, he saw it. He saw the man of Revelation 12 before the foundation of the world. It was all done. So guess what? We got to walk it out. And I'm guilty at times of not doing it. Not like I should. Right, right. We get to teach the next generation. Yeah, with what? Fear and trembling. I don't think I fear and tremble enough sometimes. So, you know what's sad? And I'll, I'll say this to you guys. Sometimes I take my salvation for granted. I'm, I'm honest. And I'll repent. I'll be there soon. Oh, man. You know, you just get it in your heart sometimes. Wow, I've taken this for granted. I've taken what a precious gift God gave for me. And I'm just saying, oh, I'm all set. No, you're not. You're set in Christ, but you need to walk it out. Come on, we need to walk this thing out. Until, until what? Until we all come to the unity of faith. What's it see in Ephesians? To the measure of the stature of part of Christ. Yeah. The fullness of Christ, right? We've had in part for so long now. Maybe that's, maybe that's part of it. I don't know, I'm rambling here. But maybe that's part of our discontentment. It probably is. That we've had in part for so long. I'm hungry for fullness. I'm hungry for the fullness of Christ in all of us. Not just me. Not just you, Donna. But all of us. All of us. To the measure of the... Can you... See, I can't even... Eye doesn't see. Ear doesn't hear. It hasn't even entered into my heart. Yeah. What God has prepared. And it's already a done deal. For those that love him. Think about it. I can't even imagine the fullest of all of us. And not just here. Yeah. The whole remnant he has. Because... Yeah. Because it's only the remnant. Come on, he's got a remnant that's going to come to the fullness, that's going to stick their feet in the Jordan with the ark, and it's going to open up the waters so the rest can go over. Now think about that. When they crossed over the water, how long did it take them to get over? Priests standing there the whole time in that water. Did they think about themselves? No. It wasn't about them. It was about the whole body. The whole unit crossing over. How long did that? You picture how long? Over three million? Three, three million, four million? Think about that. And I don't know how wide it was, but it took time. Yeah, a long time. <laughs> but the thing is, Pastor Tim's right. They were not self-centered. We can't be self-centered. We have to be God-centered. God-centered and centered on one another. See, we're not the only ones in this race. Come on. Go ahead, Lynn. I could be wrong, but I keep seeing, and I hate this word, <laughs> I keep seeing the word patience. Patience. Having patience with yourself, number one. Well, maybe not number one, but having patience with people and people having patience with you. Because there's so many people that I have run into during my lifetime that have no patience with people and they just bite their head off. And they'd rather get them out of the way than deal with them. That's the flesh. Well, yeah. That's the flesh. Yeah, but the, I, think it's, I think it's a big thing. If you don't have patience with somebody and understanding, mm -hmm. God's understanding, then <laughs> you don't have patience with yourself or anybody else. Because you can't get there if you don't, um, what do I want to say, help people? You know, if, I mean, you can't get there by yourself. So if you don't, and I was just talking to Ed about this this morning too, and, you know, people that have no patience. How do you deal with them? How do you deal with yourself? So, yeah, yeah. you know. You've got to look at everybody from the Spirit. That's it. Through the eyes of the Spirit. That's it. We don't. 
Yep. See, we all want to help everyone. God's will is that all men shall be saved. But he knows the will, he wasn't. And, you know, we don't like this person. He even created the evil for that day. We don't like that one. No, but he did. Because, you know what? And he put the evil, he put us in the middle of that evil. But to overcome it. To overcome and for a sign that God can say, I had my mark in the midst of you, and you cannot say, I did not know, or whatever, because here's my mark. See, we look at ourselves wrong. We're the sign. Yeah. We are a sign. Yep. If you have called God, cut off, you're a sign. Yep. And in the midst of it, hey, you know what? Here's the bottom line. After 30, 40, 50, Yeah, one way or the other. If you're going to keep complaining about the little fleshy thing, no problem. He'll let you keep complaining 80, 90, 100, 120 years, whatever you want to think. And then he just takes the complaint away. Then what are you going to do when you deal with your spirit? <laughs> Brother Barry? Mm -hmm. Eternity is a long time. Oh. Brother Barry? Yeah. Oh. Yo. Here. I was thinking when you were saying about the priest standing in the middle of the water and how long it took. And I just, like Jesus, laid his life down for the others. I mean, they stood there a long time and a long time, and they didn't think about themselves, like you said. Mm -hmm. They laid their lives down so that, for the others to go. That's it, for others. I mean, when you're standing in the middle of a miracle, you don't think about yourself too much. Right, that's it, bud. That's what they were doing. They, were, they, they just marveled. They marveled that they walked in that water and it rolled all the way I down. I want to touch Linda's word. Go ahead. Patience. Well, now, wait a minute. There's patience in, like, I want to hurry up. And there's patience like the sick people mm. go to a hospital. You're a patient. Mm. So you not only need patience in your own self, but you need patience with the patient with the sick ones, with those that are lacking, those that are hurt and in need, you become the doctor or you become the healer or you bring the word of healing to those patients. Because right, they're in the world. And you're in the spirit. Yes. Lay your life down for others. That's what it is. You're laying your life down if you're going to deal with a patient. Chris, I just wanted to say, um, when the Lord deals with, has dealt with me, there's such a freedom afterwards that it's like, <clears throat> because a lot of times, we all know, it's the flesh and it's those irritations, those little irritations that get to us, not the big things so little much, because we're, it's not that. It's those, but I, what I love about the Lord is that he loves us so much, he'll deal with the little things, because we don't think it's nothing. And it's like you said, he... He loves us so much, he'll deal with us in such a way. And it's like, I say to the Lord afterwards, thank you so much because I feel so free. You know? And it's like, you're not going to do that again simply because you, it, when he's spoken to you that way and you know it's the Lord, it's like, oh my God, I didn't realize I was doing that. And now I'm free. I'm free from that. And sometimes you can share that with someone else and you set them free. He who the Son... You either, you know what it is? It's simple. You either believe it or you don't. You either have faith or you don't. I believe that God is bringing us to the fullness of who he is. His word says it, and not one thing he's ever said has fallen to the ground. So if he said it, it's happening, Danny. It's happening. He's bringing us to a place where we're going to be in the total of his fullness. What it looks like? I have no clue. Yet to be they have to be revealed, but it's going to be fantastic. That's all I can say. Yeah. We'll end it there. Amen? Amen. It's 1045. Amen. Amen. Amen.
a double. 